It's nice to go back every once in a while. Oh, the wilderness is not like this world that we have. The world is, is so noisy, but the wilderness is where you can find God alone, and that's where I want you to find him as well, alone with God. Mary and Joseph and Simeon and Anna lived in that type of world. So when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arm and praised God, saying, and think of this, the God-man being held in this man's arms. What a thing. Sovereign Lord, as you promised. He probably was speaking right to the baby. You may now dismiss your servant in peace, for mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the nations. Genesis 12, 1 and 2. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And so we look at the temple of the Holy Spirit without measure in that day. I recall Revelation chapter 12, which says, And she brought forth the man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her son was taken up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God that they should be feed her for a thousand two hundred and sixty days and there was a great battle in heaven Michael and his angels fought with the dragon the dragon fought with his angels and they prevailed not neither was their place found anywhere in heaven for them and the great dragon was cast out the old serpent who was called the devil and Satan who seduces the whole earth who was cast to the earth his angels were thrown down with him and I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of God and the power of Christ, because the accuser of our brethren is cast forth, who accused them before our God day and night. And what happened? And they, the brethren, overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for a revelation of the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. So what does this mean to us in closing? Well, the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, This is to you, because she's the mother of the church. This is you and me. You ever see it this way? This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. It should be a sign that would be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul. Think upon his passion. Think of what he went through for you, for me. Think of what he did for you, and he's doing for you right now. God hasn't abandoned any of us. He's with us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. When you go through trials and when I go through trials, do we thank him and say, Lord, I am participating with you in that sword that pierced through Mary's heart? Or in those 
crown of thorns that went down on your head or the spitting in my face, is that participating with you in this? It's a tall order, folks. It's not easy. And it's not supposed to be easy. Because we're not supposed to have it easy here. We're supposed to have it hard. Because the way of God is always the way of the cross. And not the way of ease. The comfort comes to our heart. Not the easy way. When a person is called to religious life, Oh, you can try to hold on to the old wife. You can try to hold on to the old man. You can try to hold on to everything you've got. It's like playing chess. God knows all the moves. And you might try to negotiate with God for your part in what he's got planned for you. You're not going to win if God's called, because God's calling, His vocations are without revocation. You can't win when God has called you. He doesn't let you go. It's like a love that will not let you go. I wanted to quit so many times. I want to just go flee to the wilderness and say, no. It's too painful. It's too noisy. Like Peter, you have to go to Rome to take the cross. To be crucified upside down outside the city. Go by the stone. I'm going back to Rome to be crucified. And Peter turned around and went. The only thing that we can say to God is, I surrender all. Only the reality of Jesus and what His call is on your life will be the reality for all eternity. If you choose not to go the way of the cross, you can't be close to Christ until you go through that Via Dolorosa, that way of sorrows. He is a man of sorrows. We have a mother of sorrows. We also have the joy that is set before us who endured the cross, despising the shame, but is set down at the right hand of God, where we will someday be as well. So trust in Him. Trust in His power to pull you through anything that you're going through. And I know everybody's going through something. I feel it. God bless you.